Can you tell the difference between these two notes? The first is middle C on a piano, and the second note is also middle C on the same piano, but slightly modified. They sound nearly identical, but there is a fundamental difference between the two notes. The second note is missing a component. One of the frequencies that comprises middle C has been filtered out. In my last video, I talked about how musical notes are made up of a collection of harmonics, frequencies which are integer multiples of a fundamental frequency. If you haven't seen that, I've provided a link down below, so be sure to check that out. The fundamental frequency corresponds to the tone that we hear. In the case of middle C, the fundamental frequency is 261 hertz and sounds like this. Middle C on a piano is comprised of numerous harmonics, not just the fundamental frequency. The second harmonic, which has a frequency of 522 hertz and is exactly one octave higher than the fundamental frequency, sounds like this. The third harmonic has a frequency of 783 hertz, three times the value of the fundamental frequency. This is what the fourth harmonic sounds like, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth. When combined all together, you get middle C on a piano. But if we take away the first harmonic and keep the rest, it still sounds like middle C. That might seem a little strange. After all, we've taken out the frequency that corresponds to the tone that we hear. Everything that's left is at least an octave higher than middle C. But we still hear a note that sounds like its fundamental frequency is at 261 hertz. Now, if we filter out both the first and second harmonic, we still hear something that sounds like middle C. Maybe a little more tinny than usual, but middle C nonetheless. We can even filter out the first three harmonics and the resulting note still resembles middle C. So what's going on? The resulting sound wave that we hear is comprised of individual sound waves all combined together. Each of those individual waves has a unique and distinct frequency. If the fundamental frequency has a wave with a frequency of 1 hertz, the next harmonic will have a frequency of 2 hertz, and the third harmonic will have a frequency of 3 hertz. Now, the period of the wave has the same period as the wave corresponding to the fundamental frequency. Let's start with the second harmonic and add successively more harmonics and see the effect that it has on the resulting waveform. Here's the combined waveform of the second and third harmonic. Here's what happened when we add in the fourth. We see that the period of the resulting wave has a period corresponding to the fundamental frequency, even though the fundamental frequency has never been added into the mix. Adding in the harmonics with higher frequencies will result in a waveform that has a period which corresponds to the fundamental frequency, even in the absence of that fundamental frequency. And this isn't some isolated curiosity about the physics of sound waves. We experience the effects of the fundamental frequency in our daily lives. Most speakers on phones are not capable of generating frequencies in the 200 Hz range. Most adult male voices have a natural tonal frequency at around 150 Hz. But a phone speaker can't produce frequencies that low. But it can definitely generate frequencies over 200 Hz without issue. The reason that we hear a male voice that sounds completely natural over the phone is due to the phenomenon of the missing fundamental. The higher frequencies in a male's voice will collectively generate a waveform with a periodicity that corresponds to a low frequency tone. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something new, and as always, stay curious.